I'm here with Tin and Chuk and Dr. Nathalie Talak today. Can you let our viewers know which companies you represent and where they're based? Uh, hello, so um, I'm a researcher in Brussels at the university and I co-founded a think tank called Fintech Policy EU where we uh, do research on regulatory and compliance for everything fintech, so blockchain and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, the idea is to see how different laws could apply to different blockchain and AI projects so we can do legal engineering and create ad hoc uh, legal structures for uh, projects. Uh, Hi. Um, hi, my name is Natalie. Um, I'm the founder of Denkfabrik, um, which is um, which is a company that fosters adoption of blockchain technology um, into corporates and institutional investors. And so we are doing both research. Um, uh, that's why why we are collaborating, both research and um, and communication, as in workshops and consulting for corporates and investors who have not entered the blockchain space yet, um, who are thinking about entering. So can you just let us know a little bit about the project that you're working on together? Um, so the idea is to, um, to find different use cases um, and to see how the technology works, to uh, better present the technology because most of the people don't understand how it works. So the idea is to make it more transparent and then to better explain this to the regulators as well and um, be able to um, produce, as I said, legal uh, structures. And, uh, but you mentioned that you work a lot with um, sort of startup companies and um, early stage companies. Uh, can you let us know some of the challenges that they may face um, regarding as well the blockchain regulatory um, environment? Sure. Um, so as I mainly work with like the like larger corporates and investors, like the challenges they are facing is mainly that they're thinking of blockchain as like the silver bullet for for everything. And um, what I found most interesting and most challenging for them as well is to find a use case that that's actually of use for them. So basically, um, basically very often the answer is no, maybe you don't want to enter the blockchain space, but it's exciting for them to see what options there are and why they're not entering the space. Um, and then, of course, other than just implementing a tech solution that works, it's also about adoption. So creating, creating an environment and creating a community around it, bringing people on board and facilitating the, the adoption by that. Um, and when it comes to um, having to create legal frameworks for blockchain and AI, uh, most of the um, sort of opposition comes from banks um, and even just um, tax harmonization laws. Um, does your research touch base on this and what can you comment on this? I am mostly working on financial law, but there's always a tax perspective as well. Um, but. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, banks um, uh, banks are af afraid to lose their businesses, of course, but they also fund most of the projects. So the idea is to create a dialogue between uh, the incumbents and, and the newcomers. Um, yeah, sorry. I, I think that's answered it, yeah. Um, and what can, so Malta has a, a, a blockchain regulatory framework that's quite innovative. Um, can you let us know what your, your thoughts on that? Well, I guess the idea is to make it simpler for the companies um, to develop their projects so that they come here and be able to experiment because that's the real problem uh, with the innovative solutions that we don't know which laws can apply. And so um, the first reaction usually is uh, to apply like the most hardcore laws, like um, to be a broker or a proper bank. But this obviously requires a lot of money, so it's very hard for startups to to be regulated as banks um, um, in, in the beginning. So I think it's a really good idea to use this um, regulatory sandbox, actually, where you can experiment and see how to manage the the project and see like who can be liable for what and so on. So determine, determine rights and obligations of all the parties uh, in the project. Um, and how do you think Malta can make itself a more attractive environment for blockchain companies? Um, in my opinion, Malta um, already is. So amongst like my peers and co-founders, it has one of the like 
best reputations for a legislate, uh, uh, legislature um, that's like exciting for new and innovative startups. Um, a little bit like Estonia, um, and I think I actually think that most exciting. Um, that, or the most exciting thing we see coming out um, from like being a first mover is that you create those like secondary businesses. So Malta has now a whole economy that like was created around by them being a first mover, and it's what we see with Estonia too. Now that you have like e-residency, um, there's a whole new sector coming out from it. So sometimes it pays off to be to be a first mover, both in both in the public sector um, or, or in private. And lastly, can you let me know what um, what do you think of the summit so far, and what do you, have you found the most interesting? Uh, I find it really great. Um, not only because uh, it's really sunny here, because I'm I live in Brussels right now, <laughs> uh, but also because a couple of years ago I had lots of ideas about blockchain projects, and now I see many of them actually uh, implemented here. So it's really interesting to see uh, how this works. Yeah. True. Yeah, I, I can agree. I um, I find both from the startup perspective, but also from the um, from from the side of the institutional investors, um, it's a super um, super senior and very well like curated um, audience. Um, and I, I found it super. Everyone is very very open about um, about innovation, and it just yeah shows itself in the audience here. Thank you both very much for your time. Thank you.